Kenyans find themselves at the mercy of a government that seems to look the other way as bad food is pushed down their throats, uh, the throats of the citizens. And at the heart of the concerns about the poison in our plate or in your plate is the Kenya Bureau of Standards that seems to have yet again failed the standards test, having failed to protect Kenyans from the foul ongoings in the food chain. NTV's Gladys Gashanja put this story together. The Kenya Bureau of Standards is once again facing questions of falling standards following yet another scandal that has hit the country's food market. Revelations that your favorite staple already in shelves and perhaps already on your plate was contaminated with unacceptable levels of aflatoxins has had the country on edge and with good reason. Then we have what we call chronic exposure, which uh, in my opinion is where the problem is. And this is where um, people consume not very high amounts of aflatoxin, but amounts of aflatoxin that are beyond uh, the permissible threshold. Now that is scientific. Eh? Beyond the allowable um, uh, threshold that has been set for safety. And um, eventually, with time, the cumulative effect of these toxins in their body leads to complications like cancer, particularly the liver cancer. Kebs that was meant to protect you from harm just a week before NTV aired the expose announced it had recalled some peanut butter brands from the market after tests revealed they had been contaminated with aflatoxin. Among them, Nati's, which had been banned in January but given an all clear to return to the market in April, but was later found to have doubled the required limit of aflatoxin. And perhaps in keeping with its reaction campaign, hours before White Alert aired, Kebs quickly announced it had suspended the license of these five maize millers over the sale of substandard flour, a move perceived to have been as a result of panic within the maize mill supply chain. Ironically, test results that NTV conducted on samples of a Kifaru flour milled by Alpha Grain Limited showed it had no aflatoxin toxin contamination. Some of the millers have since questioned Kebs testing parameters, saying they had done independent tests that had returned different results. It's not the first time, though, that the Kenya Bureau of Standards is falling short of expectation on its role as a regulator. In fact, its former managing director, the late Dr. Kyoko Mangeli, made some startling revelations about how the body was forced to bend to political pressure to allow contaminated maize into the market. And his forewarnings then ring so true today. I'm more than 100% sure that it affects people and that within the next 10 to 15 years we will also have serious cases of cancer. Even more recently, Kebs has found itself at the heart of the country's major food scandals and have been taken to task for allowing substandard food into the country. In 2018, Parliament and the DCI investigated claims that sugar contaminated with mercury was sneaked into the country with the Kenya Bureau of Standards at the center. There are still no answers on whether the bad sugar made it into your cup or not. Sisi kama wa Kenya, tulipata report, sukari ya mercury ilingi hapa. Paka saai, hatuju tulikunya yo sukari ama hatuku kunya. Some of its top management have been arrested and charged for allowing bad fertilizer and rice into the country. Their cases are still pending in court. Gladys Gashanja, NTV. Now, if you follow this story, there is, in some ways, heroes and villains, if we could call it that. And every time you do an investigative piece, uh, people want to know who is to blame and action to be taken. And already you see the back and forth between NCPB, the Millers. Is it them to blame or is it what now people are calling on the back of this story, the Kenya Bureau of Substandards? What people want to know, as you track this story, where do you lay the blame on? Um, this is... Um it's not a one answer 
um, that I can give because when I was speaking to the millers, I didn't uh, cover them in the story, but I was making several phone calls. I met some of them, and they were afraid to, you know, to, to speak on camera because they were afraid that they were going to lose their licenses. Yeah. And the issue is currently they can't import maize because there's that window that the government closed, so mm -hmm. there's no importation of maize. So they are forced to buy maize from the government. Now, what some of the millers were telling me is perhaps the samples that I tested was uh, came out after the government released maize some uh, sometime around March, and the millers actually admit and they say there's a, such a big problem because the maize they get from government is high with aflatoxins, mm -hmm. but they can't speak these things out because they will lose business and then they will lose their licenses. So let's go back to government. How are they handling this maize that they are selling to the millers? So you can't quite say the problem is with the millers because they're only milling what they've been given. Yeah. So who is to blame here? It's, it's Kebs. It's, is it Kebs? Yeah. People, they look in the, the other the, way? The, what Ke Kebs is just a custodian of the standards. Yes. And the job is only to come and look at what is the quality of what you've produced, anything manufactured. Mm. So it's not really Kebs in this, in this case. It starts from NCPB, the maize that has been released by government to the millers. And then for the millers to mill the same same maize with the, with the clear conscience that it has a flatoxin is also another ethical problem. So that's when our KEBS come, comes in. So if KEBS look at the standards and they're way above, in this case, it's 10 parts per billion mm -hmm. and they still allow this and it has been going on for years. I mean, this story is not something that just happened the other day. Yes. It has happened way even before Mangeli became KEBS MD. A lot of Kenyans have been talking about this and what we are seeing is a cumulative effect of the aflatoxins in our bodies in the rise of cancer cases, for example, mm -hmm. and the ongoing studies that are looking at cofactors and correlations of aflatoxins to other cancers like the cervical cancer from the experts that I was talking to. Right. So there are all those, it's a myriad of issues. Yes, and as you say, you've tracked the story uh, and it started years back. You have someone we could call a hero in, in the sense the fight that he put yes. up and that's uh, Kyoko Mangeli, yes. the late uh, and, and former managing director at Kebs. I mean, he put up a, a fight uh, for the quality of maize coming into the market, but it seems it did make its way and he was fought. He lost his job, uh, you know, fighting for this particular issue for Kenyans. And those who are supposed to uh, be uh, protecting the interests of Kenyans, that is the MPs at that time, seemingly uh, looked the other way and allowed this to happen, some infiltration of maize into the market. Um, I mean, as you tell this particular story, what more can we follow? What more um, um, in terms of follow-up from yes. this story? Yeah. I mean, uh, there the are a number of issues. When I was going through uh, several reports, I didn't even show all the letters that Kyoko Mangeli was writing to the NCPB, MD, and writing to the Minister of Agriculture and the PES and several other agencies, including writing to, mm -hmm. to, to Parliament and saying that I want to come in and I want to explain these technical issues of what we found out. And uh, it so happened that the thing was so politicized and he found himself caged and he was fighting this war alone and he didn't have uh, a lot of support then. And because he was the senior most uh, manager at Kebs, he was the face of Kebs at that time. And because of the intrigues of politics, and remember we were, com we were coming from post-election violence, and there was the, 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 the I mean, we, we had a government where there was a prime minister, there's the head of state, the country was so divided. And so because of, of, of that division in terms of politics and mm -hmm. interests here and there, he just found himself alone. Mm -hmm. And so with all the reports that went through parliament, they were the ones who were supposed to look at this critically and even invite experts. Unfortunately, in this case, no single expert was interviewed mm -hmm. by the members of parliament to look at the issue of the quality of maize that was imported not just from America, but also from South Africa and also India. And to a large extent, our neighbor here, Uganda, where I was told there are also a lot of issues because the moisture content in Uganda is so high. Yes. But the maize that we bring in from Uganda through our roads and the storage and the transportation is also another issue. So it's a, it, there are a lot of issues in this. So it's not a story that we can say um, uh, we, we're done with it. We'll still continue pursuing it. Let's go back to the shelf briefly before yeah. we wrap up. And as you were doing the story, you had some, you know, you tested. Yes. Uh, professionally, you had people test the levels of aflatoxin in the different uh, flower brands. And there was a big difference, some close to zero. Yes. Can you explain that? Okay, well, so what we did in, in, in the testing, we just went like, just like a normal day, you're going for shopping. So we went to the supermarkets, we went to the local shops out actually in Nairobi and outside Nairobi. So what we did is, let's look at what Kenyans popularly eat, or yes. let's go to the shelf, randomly just select. So that's what we did. So we selected at around uh, 12 mm -hmm. brands. And we said, okay, so these are the 12 brands. So for testing, they only need 250 grams. So it's a small portion that they need for testing. Yes. 
So we didn't, they didn't know uh, the, 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 when they were doing the sampling where these uh, samples were coming from. We had the list. Yeah. So when the, the certificate came out, I was also very surprised that there, were, uh, uh, there was a variance in the levels. There were those that had 0.00. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the experts and wanted to verify. So when you say this is 5.99 parts per billion, and this is 16 parts per billion, like the highest we saw, and then there's one 0.00, what does that mean? Then I was told, when you look at wheat flour, mm -hmm. wheat flour is not largely affected by aflatoxins. It, it happens, but in this case, not so much compared to the maize. The reason being, the surface area of the maize grain mm -hmm. Uh, houses the aflatoxin and it, it stays there, it holds on there. And the seed coat is also softer compared to wheat flour. Yes. So the samples that we tested in terms of the wheat flowers, that's the, those are the samples you saw uh, registering 0, 0.00, so meaning that they couldn't find those detectable levels. And then also they were using a method called ELISA method. Now this is going to be too technical, technical yeah. but to just simplify it, the instruments that are used to test for aflatoxins, they vary. So there are those that will test, and if they find anything that is below 1, mm -hmm. it will not register as 1.00. It will just say 0, 0.00 because it's so significant during that process of, uh, of testing. Dennis, how would you like the uh, authorities and the Kenyan, who's probably enjoying yes. or trying to enjoy their meal of ugali right now, yeah. to respond to this story? Well, uh, I had someone, you know, crack a joke that we are taking milk with hydrogen peroxide, we are also eating ugali with aflatoxin. Uh, list with meat with sodium metabisulfite. It's also a complex <laughs> issue for me yes. reporting these stories, but the takeaway for me is simply this. Uh, because it, it, you, there's a way you can push agencies to act. They're paid salaries, they know their job, and the reactions that we normally get when we do these stories also surprise us because they, they sit on salaries and this is the job they're supposed to do. So for us it's just to keep pushing and keep pushing so that Kenyans are informed. The idea is to push this information for people to know what exactly is a aflatoxin and then personally do your own studies and then check what you eat and just ask questions because in Kenya we, we, we don't have the habit of questioning and going to the depths of our questions we forget too quickly. So for me is let's just look at, um, uh, uh, let's look at the information at hand for the government. Let them just check this thing. Finally, you know. red alert, white alert, what's next on the menu? Oh, a lot of people are saying I need now to look at green alert. Uh, another one says uh, we need to deal with blue alert, which is water. Uh, let's see what the future holds. All right, on that alert, we'll take a break here on NTV tonight.